Welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. In today's demonstration, we will be covering the impact of having too many non-clustered indexes. So what I have been doing in the last few demos, last few videos that you have been seeing on our channel is I have taken up a demo content, a demo piece from our masterclass content. So at SQL Maestros, we have a lot of masterclasses. One of those popular masterclasses is SQL Server Internals, Troubleshooting and Performance Tuning. We friendly, in a friendly way, we call this a SQL Server Performance Tuning Masterclass. It is 40 hours of deep dive content covering the length and breadth of SQL Server database engine from a performance tuning perspective, performance troubleshooting, query tuning, optimization, etc, etc. This masterclass was delivered a few weeks back live. Yes, 40 hours live spread across two weeks, four hours each day, a total of 10 days. And guess what? It was recorded. Now the recordings are available on sqlmaestros.com. 40 hours of deep dive content, HD video recordings are available. Look at the screen. What you see in front of you are the modules from module 1 to 14. And when you look at the module titles, you will fathom that we are going really deep covering a lot of aspects of SQL Server performance troubleshooting. Of course, the focus is on database engine. And you know, the other day I was just trying to see how many SQL demos we have in this masterclass and precisely about 503 demo pieces, real world demos, problems that you face day to day with respect to query tuning, index tuning, weight statistics, baselining, extended events, CPU performance troubleshooting, memory issues, TEMDB, IO, so many things. So go to sqlmaestros.com. You can access the recordings now. We give you lifetime subscription. Yes, and 60% off as of this recording. So when you go online, you get 60% off. You can subscribe and get lifetime access, which means you can watch the content as many times as you want over the next few years. All right. Or in case you're not interested in recordings, you may also just choose to kind of um, register for any upcoming schedule. So when you go to the masterclass section, you will see upcoming classes as well as recorded content. OK, that's what we have. And so as I promised, so we have today's demo, today's tutorial, one of the content pieces from the masterclass. So what I'm going to do is let's zoom out. We are getting inside index tuning, which is module 10. And I'll pick up a content from there, which is folder number eight, NC crude performance. This is the update performance when you have too many non clustered indexes. So what's the motivation and background about this demonstration? In this demonstration, I'm trying to show you that when we have a lot of non clustered indexes, so we're typically designing these non clustered indexes to improve select performance, the select queries, the read workloads. And gradually, when we land up creating too many non clustered indexes, we tend to forget that our update performance or our insert performance, they get affected, they get really impacted because each insert and update also has to uh, update the non clustered indexes. So uh, just because you can create a lot of non clustered indexes does not mean that you should create because with, with every non clustered index that you add to your table, you are impacting the performance of your insert, update and delete statements, right? So this is what we mean by create, update and delete. That is the crude performance, the uh, data, the, the modification queries, the data modification queries, let's call it because each data modification query also has to touch non clustered indexes. So this is a very, very simple demo. It serves as a reminder to all of you that Okay, you are creating non clustered indexes to improve select performance, but do not ignore your uh, uh, queries that are doing data modification because with every non clustered indexes, those uh, data modification queries are getting affected. Okay, let's jump into the demo right away. I'm going to use AdventureWorks 2016 here. Let's turn on statistics time and IO. 
IO is not really required, but yeah, let's do that. <coughs> now we are going to create a copy of this table sales order detail. We are going to create two copies. One is SOD1, the other one, one will be SOD2. So SOD1 will not have any non-clustered indexes and SOD2 will have a few non-clustered indexes. And that's how we are going to compare performance. So let's create a copy SOD1, let's do that. There you go. Okay, we create a copy, the first copy. Let's create a second copy, SOD2. Job done. Let's look at the index structure for these two tables, SOD1 and SOD2. Okay, incorrect syntax. Let's do this once more, first one. Okay, uh, where is our time? Too many stuff there, out there. Let's go and check the output there. Okay, there you go. So the object sales SOD does not have any indexes or we do not have permissions. So of course, just like SOD1, even SOD2 will be the same, the same output you will see, which does not have any indexes. Okay, we have turned time on, etc. all good. Now let's add a few non-clustered indexes on SOD2. So we are having, adding a non-clustered index on line total, modified date, product ID, and then a composite index on line total and modified date, uh, multi-column index. Let's do all of that. The first index, there you go. Let's do the second one, there you go. Let's do the third one, there you go. And let's do the fourth one. So all of these indexes are on SOD2. Now we got to insert the data. This is where we are going to test. First, let's turn the identity insert on for SOD1 because we have an identity column out there. Let's look at the count for SOD1, 121317 records, and for SOD2, same number. So we're all good. SOD1 and SOD2 has same number of records, but SOD2 has four non-clustered indexes, and SOD1 does not have any index whatsoever. <clears throat> now, let's go and do the first insert in SOD1 and we are going to record the time. So we are inserting in SOD1 and we are selecting all the data from SOD1 itself. So a simple uh, self insert out there. Let's go and do this. And we don't need the execution plan. All we are going to do is record the time. Yeah, we, we can actually look into the execution plan also. Why not? Okay, let's do this. So let's go and execute this. Okay, let's see how much time this takes. So one, two, one, three, one, seven rows affected and I am going to look at the time. So what time do we get in a new window? Let's record these timings. Okay, so this is what is of interest to us. So this insert statement took about 1.6 seconds, uh, 1.7 seconds, uh, the total elapsed time and all of that 1.5, close to 1.5 seconds uh, CPU time. Let's record this. Okay, and let's go and look into the execution plan. So if you look at the execution plan, a very straightforward execution plan, there are no non-clustered indexes on SOD2. So the insert turns out to be very straightforward, just touching the pages of the heap because SOD1 is a heap, very straightforward execution plan. Now, Let's go and turn the identity insert off for SOD1 and let's turn identity insert on for SOD2. Let's do this. And now we are going to insert data into SOD2. This is going to be interesting. Let's go and execute this and let's see how much time this takes. So you can already see that this is taking a bit of time simply because it's touching a lot of non-clustered indexes. So let's go and record this number and put it up here. Each non-clustered index that you have on SOD2 is having an impact on the insert query. So now what you can see is 1.7 seconds has turned out to be 7.7 .7 seconds, quite a bit of performance impact. Let's look at the execution plan and clearly, and this is why I turned on the execution plan to show you that we are touching not just the table, the heap. We don't have a cluster index. That's why I call this as a heap, but we are also touching all the non-clustered indexes because when you insert data, you have to insert into all the four non-clustered indexes. All the four non-clustered indexes have to be updated. So you can clearly see the performance impact of having too many non-clustered 
indexes. So this was a very, very simple, very quick demo. Now in the masterclass, I go even deeper into many of these aspects, but for this uh, free tutorial for the SQL community, the idea was just to serve this demo, just to serve as a reminder that just don't keep running behind improving the select query performance by adding too many non-clustered indexes. Keep an eye on your DML queries. Keep an eye on your data modification queries and their performance metrics. Hope this video was useful and hope this was worth your time. And hopefully you have learned something new. So share this with your friends and colleagues. And yes, log on to sqlmaestros.com and check out the upcoming masterclasses or the masterclass recordings. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, masterclasses, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.